Hey guys, VBad here with another V Plays, and the last time we looked at the quote unquote best tier 10 fighter, we looked at altitude fighters. Now I want to kind of cover your mid to low altitude, more turn fighters, I guess. Uh, the key 162 3 is debatable here, but really, I think it comes down to the Yak 30 versus the LA 15. Now I know what I prefer, and that's the LA 15 just because I feel like it's more versatile. But with that said, the Yak-30, it's hard to deny that the Yak-30 has an incredible potential for not only maneuverability, but also speed. Uh, I've known a couple of friends that have actually kitted this thing out with some pretty decent speed mods. And since the only other thing that can outturn a Yak-30 at Tier 10 is another Yak-30, you're really not going to be in a position where you need to be the most maneuverable platform on the battlefield. Most of the other aircraft at this tier have sacrificed much of their maneuverability for more velocity and more altitude and more acceleration. And even still, the altitude of this aircraft is going to start rivaling that of what we see with multi-rolls with an optimal altitude that's decent enough and then a service ceiling that is incredibly high which means that the aircraft even though it'll be bleeding energy as it goes through that climb it can go up there and do that type of work additionally you're talking about tier 10 23 millimeter cannons they're all going to be centrally mounted right here and 510 damage per second with a range out to 2,600 feet. Now, this isn't the same as the P1101 with its incredible DPM with those 420s, but these 23s are going to be surprisingly capable. Now, the LA-15 has the identical gun setup as the Yak-30, but it sacrifices some of its maneuverability to get more versatility in the maximum optimal altitude as well as some pretty decent airspeed and maneuverability to boot but for ease of use which is really what this comes down to is that the yak 30 is probably going to be the easiest aircraft for anybody to fly i've never seen a yak 30 player really struggle to do well unless they push themselves beyond their altitude limitations and even then, they're still a formidable foe because of the 510 damage per second. Now, I don't want to discount that the Ki-162-3, even though it is more of that mid-altitude fighter like the LA-15, it's still a good fighter and has some good maneuverability with an 8.9 second turn time here, which is actually going to be, let's compare with the LA-15, a little bit better than the LA-15 has here. But the, really, the, the shortfall is going to be the fact that it's mounting two 30 millimeter cannons. And we've already discussed that 30 millimeter cannons are difficult to master, but potentially very potent. And again, this is coming down to ease of use. So without any further ado, let's hop into the aircraft that I think is the best slash easiest tier 10 turn fighter, the Yak-30. All right, so here we are in the Yak-30 battle, but we're actually going up against Cloud Reigns in a specialized ground attacker, so it's going to be tough to keep up with the capture points, so we'll do what we can here to try and influence the battlefield in any way we can. I'm going to F2 the mine, and I'm going to head to the airfield. The airfield is going to be the perfect spot for me to take this aircraft, but... It doesn't mean that I can't leave, and that's something that's nice about the Soviet turn fighters. I hated the Yak-3, hated that thing. I skipped it entirely, but once you get to the Yak-15 and up, the jets, it allows you to be able to get a decent speed. Now, this isn't like earth shattering. There are lots of other planes that are quicker than this, but being able to get up to 400 miles an hour is more than enough. Also, your altitude is much better. I can get nearly up to 5,000 feet with this thing before I start hitting funny numbers. Couple of good hits there. Oh, I see you. You're injured. That is perfect. I hate getting caught by Jawas. Jawas, however, are also worth a lot of capture points. We see a... Hunter here, multi-roll, and just look at that 510 damage. Woo! Chipping away at these guys. See an LA-160 over here. We're really trying to get him off of 
that aircraft he's been chasing because now he isn't going to be getting that kill. I will be getting that kill and that is worth a lot more points. Okay, I see you. Nice, and we finally got the zone. Now I'm actually going to head over and try and capture... Did I ever have to that? I guess I didn't. I'm going to head over here and see what I can do to try and capture this zone. Ah, can't ignore this guy. Great hit scan with these 23s and with the long range. Look at that. We've already taken out his engine. And if I really wanted to get greedy, and we will just to show that it can do it, not that I recommend doing this, but we can chase him up to higher altitudes. Come on. It does hurt my maneuverability, though. There we go. And I open myself up for that type of engagement. I just put myself in a bad energy state with an aircraft that has 430s on my 6. And now I'm getting close to their spawn. That's why I don't recommend going after those aircraft up at higher altitude. They're going to be sacrificing somewhere, and we've been letting these guys make the run on our zone right now. I love and hate this Jawa. They're beautiful when you're flying them, but they are super dangerous. Let's come back around on this guy. Engines out, tails out, aircraft's dead. These guys, unfortunately, are fighting outside the zone. So it's hard for me to get these capture points back. Let's see, who do we got? Uh, the LA-160 from earlier. Snake that kill from our allies. Hunter again. Get out of here. Really need to be capturing zones. Again, I'm not going to be able to go after Cloud Rains nearly as effectively as I could have if I was in the 1101. I could eat the dirt right now and potentially switch aircraft, but that's not really the point, is it? The point is to showcase how strong this aircraft can be. We managed to pick up another zone. We'll head back towards the mid to see if we can continue to maintain control of the center. Who do we got here? Jawa. Ugh. Never good to go after the first plane. I'm going to see if I can grab some wrench real quick and then we'll go up and engage these guys. Try and be surprising. Look at that. We're over 500 miles an hour. Give me that wrench, guys. I need it. Now we'll start engaging when they're already engaged with other aircraft. If I would have just caught these guys as they came into the zone, we'd be stuck in that same situation we were earlier when we were getting chased down by everything outside the zone. Getting those good hits at range, and he's deleted. Next target. Ooh. Keep switching. Yeah, I see it. He's kind of the king of this altitude regime. And this is going to be the LA-15's little brother here. There we go, grade two. Oh, I see a cloud. Let's see what we can do here. Maybe we can tease him a little bit. We managed to pick up a mine. Can we do all right against him? Again, it's not that we can't go after him, but... He is a very capable pilot, and I would not put it past him to bomb trap me. Or just to get the tail gunner on me in a very effective way. Oh, I got him. Okay. Whew. And the IL-40. All right. Maybe I'm underselling myself here. Here, I thought going after him was going to be a really tricky endeavor, but it looks like we got it. Oh, they got our center. Now we're just trying to see what we can do. Not what we should be doing, but what we can do. See that range? We can hit pretty far out. 
But we're making huge sacrifices to do these things. A Jawa up here. You're not supposed to be up here, friendo. You have the same issues with airspeed at this altitude as I do. And you're on fire. Nice. We just picked up a grade one. That doesn't showcase a strong aircraft. I don't know what does. Oh, there's Cloud now. <laughs> He's getting into his uh, MiG-15. And there's those 23s. Just good range. Good consistent fire here. I should be thanking him for letting me uh, showcase this thing in a bit of a dogfight against an altitude fighter at a pretty decent altitude. So we're able to pick it up. We're going to lose the match. That was it, pretty much inevitable. I mean, I guess it, it wasn't inevitable. If I was a little bit more aggressive against Cloud, we might have been able to get that victory. But I was showing off the aircraft and not showing off my tactics. So... We go took out the heavy and that's gonna be game we'll throw up a gg and we still made a plethora of medals we got eighteen thousand personal points cloud even hopped into the xf90 <laughs> uh but yeah we got the akamatsu medal we got conqueror we got guardian we got flying paladin badge we got hero of the sky grade one flying warrior badge and of course wing legend because we broke 14,000 personal points we did not get the win but this is an this goes to show why I've, I've always been a little bit hesitant about turn fighters because turn fighters are they're not a jack of all trades they are a master of the dogfight and the yak 30 makes that very easy to do and then still be able to get around the battlefield so I don't see an issue with the yak 30 as being somebody's first tier 10 in fact, I would go so far as to say, as I continue this best of tier 10 series, that the Yak-30 is probably going to be the best first tier 10 for anybody who likes flying any type of uh, fighter aircraft, whether that be heavies, whether it be altitude fighters, turn fighters, I think that this is going to be your best bet. Now, for those of you who like to blow things up on the ground, we'll get to that portion a little bit later. But in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and taking a look at the Yak-30 as the best turn fighter at Tier 10. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one.